James. What? Is it you we have to thank for that wonderful meditation? Yes, of course. <laughs> that, was, that was wonderful. And what I love, you know, we are here at Celebrate Life Progressive Spirituals Community. The thing is, we are about the science. We're about the, you know, the, the philosophy. I love the synchronicities that already show up because what I am talking about today, I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Who put that stuff in the meditation? Oh my goodness. Okay. So I was like, if I'm going to give today's talk to address a title, I'm calling it start anywhere. Start, just start anywhere. Okay. It is definitely a conversation about moving forward, but it seems like it. It seems like it's also a conversation about um, forgiveness. And don't worry, I am not going to ask you to forgive somebody else outside of you. I mean, it's uh, apparently it's uh, about self forgiveness. And let me start, and then you'll see what I mean. First of all, I am definitely saying whatever you're up to in this world, whatever you're up to in your life, and. Um, I'm going to use the examples of finishing off um, two books and cleaning my house. Okay, cleaning my house. Whatever it is that is the pressing matter of the moment, start anywhere. In terms of, in instead of judging yourself, which only gets in the way. Um, as one psychologist, I believe, said, um, it is human nature to believe less of ourselves then um, is realistic. It's, it's easier for us to believe negative things about ourselves than positive things. But what they also said, and I think this was a Louise L. Hay, actually, um, in one of her books, it says something like, if you're trying to make positive change in your life, you do it better with kindness to yourself, encouragement to yourself, than um, scolding yourself. and. I know from my own experience, scolding oneself can often feel like I'm, I'm just trying to be fair. I'm just trying to, you know, not, not, you know, not give myself any excuses. And then we start in on beating ourselves up, or as my, my friend, the psychologist, Dr. Rain says, terrorizing ourselves. In fact, I know this because I've called her and, you know, vented to my dear friend, who also has a degree. And her answer was a pregnant pause of silence and then ouse it. Stop terrorizing yourself. So because that is the experience I have, I get to offer that to you, which is also a reminder. The things you go through, the things that we work through in our lives, those experiences, they, they turn out to be later the epic stories we get to tell, okay, over a warm cup of something or a cold glass of something or hanging out with friends somewhere. They get to be the epic story of how we made it through ultimately. So have some kindness for yourself. As the Buddha said, you yourself as much as anyone deserve your kindness, deserve your generosity. And I am paraphrasing, um, but yes, have some kindness, show yourself some, some, cut yourself some slack. And when you do that, you get to start anywhere with what you're working on. There is a phrase um, you've done or you're doing or you did the best you could with what you knew at the time. I did the best I could with what I knew at the time. And if I'd known better, I would have done better. That is something that I've applied to myself to help me forgive myself, frankly, as a parent, wishing I'd done even better. But also, it, give, it gave me the space to realize, well, I mean, really, I did the best I could with what I knew at the time. And if I had known better, I would have done better. And now I'm saying I'm going to do the best I can with what I know right now. And I'm going to amp it up and ratchet it up as best I can as I go forward. What I love about telling you this is, first of all, like an epic tale told to you over a cold glass or a warm mug of something, this has worked for me. 
So I can recommend it to you. Having, um, giving yourself some grace as opposed to beating yourself up has worked for me in terms of moving forward and diving in where I am right now with what I can do with the piece, like they say in um, the math class that we told our teachers we were never going to need this stuff or we told our friends, when are we going to ever use this stuff? How about this? The time when they said, when you're working on a complex problem, start with the piece of it that you can understand, the piece upon which you can take action. And just in case you're worried that I'm not going to go metaphysical on you or talk about how you can activate and accelerate your psychic ability, I am very pleased to tell you that this is transferable information. And yes, it also applies to your intuition. It also applies to you accessing and breathing into, feeling into, using your intuition for your life. Um, it takes, you know, it takes practice. In fact, um, Russell Targ, PhD, he's the physicist who worked with the CIA and with NASA on developing different psi programs, including remote viewing and precognition. He has the saying, he, he's, he was known to say that um, psychic ability, psi, is like musical ability. It's pretty commonplace in the population, but there is no substitute for practice and, and being talented, certainly, but, but also practice. And I'm pleased to tell you that all of us have that as a basic talent. It is a basic, normal part of being. That is my observation. And it is because we are, as physicists say, all one with the universe. So we act upon the universe. We're connected. So I just want you to know I'm not saying it to make you feel special. You are indeed one with everything. So you have impact. And as Russell Targ said, musical, just like musical ability, it's pretty common, commonplace throughout the populace. And even the most Honestly, anyone can be helped to pluck out a tune, even if even if they don't hear the music. Oh, I guess Beethoven is probably a good example of that. But truly speaking, anyone can be helped to at least hit one note over and over again um, at a particular mathematical rhythm. So yes, it is within us. And start anywhere in developing it. And starting anywhere can include listening to yourself, breathing, feeling into what's going on, and being kind to yourself, starting anywhere, not expecting yourself to be immediately telepathic and um, sending me messages right now with, through the looks on your, uh, your, your thumbnail pictures, um, just being and accepting you as you. What I like and, and wanted to say about, about all of this is, it is not only that it will help you clean your house and as it does for me and will later this afternoon, but also help you finish projects as it does for me and will later this evening. It also impacts everyone around you. It impacts the future. Not only you accessing your psi, and turning this into a world full of people who are Jedi-like and, oh wait, um, people like X-Men, but enlightened X-Men, that is the future we're creating. Because if we start practicing our sign now, where will we be in a, in a few hundred years? What paths will we blaze that make it easier for those who come following us to get there faster and, and more easily? So. Yes, this has to do with me cleaning my house, I promise. But truly, start anywhere. And if you have questions about how do I give myself the grace to do that when it comes to any other problem, like I said, it applies to it, you can apply this to other things going on in your life. This is what I came up with. So I'm going to share it with you. This is what I mutter to myself as I'm taking on tasks that I don't even necessarily want to do. Right. As I look at the, the, the mess I created, 
I actually have this theory where I call, I fire myself and rehire myself. So I'm like, okay, fine. If I were fired from the job of whatever this is, if somebody else were called in to start doing it or to pick up where I left off, they would walk in and they'd go, okay, so here's what we've got. There's where we're going. Let me just start and start inching my way toward it, toward the goal, toward completion. When it comes to my house, um, I call it the evict myself and move back in theory, which is even if I no longer lived in this house and somebody offered it to me at bargain prices so I could just walk back in and I couldn't resist buying it. You know, you see these TV shows, people will walk into a place that looks like, oh my Lord. And I'm not saying that my house looks like, oh my Lord, by the way, but they'll walk into the place and they'll just dig in fixing and cleaning and shoveling and moving stuff around and, and they'll consider it a good investment of their energy and time. So I say in those areas of your life that look like, oh my goodness, fire yourself. And then rehire yourself and walk into it as a new person, a new perspective, and dig in and start working on it. If it's a task like, you know, your house, or if it's your finances, whatever it is, if it's your relationships, step out and step back in, start new. As if someone who's newly come to the opportunity that whatever it is presents. Go for it. And indeed, start anywhere. As we heard in the meditation earlier, you deserve peace, wellness, joy. You deserve fill in the blank to your heart's content. You deserve to give yourself credit. In fact, um, you deserve to find yourself in the midst of what I consider an epic tale. And this is the hero's journey of it. And knowing that at some point, because you stuck to it, you will end up further along. And you will end up looking back and saying, I covered this much ground. I did. It was epic. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. <laughs> or you'll hear someone who's got a similar issue going on, whether it's love or finances or, or family interactions. And you'll be like, okay, so this is what worked for me, or this is what happened to me. Take from it what you can and what you will. Your story matters, not only to you, but if it's of use, it matters to other people. And I find it to be of use it matters to the entire world. I have a theory, a concept, I guess I should say. Um, I call it sacred stubbornness. I invite you to have some sacredness around the things about which you're stubborn. I invite you to consider yourself sacredly stubborn when it comes to something that you want to shift or make happen, whether it's your health or whatever. If it matters to you enough, you deserve to do what you can be in the story of making it happen and go right ahead, find a new way to look at it, find new resources, look at it with new eyes and go right ahead and be sacredly stubborn about what you then stick to it and, and st how you stick into it, as they say, and get on with the task. Wow. My nephew, Alaya, is a therapist. I'm surrounded happily, luckily, by therapeutic um, caregivers. <laughs> um, I, maybe I, I arranged that before I was born. But they, they pointed out that the things that I still find difficult to do, because my childhood was full of, full of trauma. And, um, you know, if that gives you any joy, please see how ridiculously cheerful I am usually always am. So let you know that even those who've gone through trauma can move forward and reach some lovely places in their life. But I still have things I, I, I find um, challenging, interesting. And my nephew had the brilliant observation that not only am I doing the best I can with what I know right now, and if I knew better, I'd do better. And what got me to where I am is 
already a significant distance from where I started. And I did the best I could with what I had. And if I'd known better, I'd have done better. My, my nephew noticed I was resisting a suggestion about something that else could help. And I suddenly realized, wait a minute, why am I being hard on myself as if, as if it also means that what I did wasn't good enough? That's not what doing more means. That's not what working on new areas means. It means, as my nephew said, you did all of those things, whatever they were, and they got you this far. Celebrate that. You did all of whatever it took to get you this far. And this far means ready for what you can learn to do next that will help you move further or what you're simply ready for. That's bright, brilliant, and joyful and just what you want to be taking on. I offer you that to you because like I said, it makes a difference to the world because your personal development as it happens also affects your sigh. I mean this deeply and truly. If you are an empath and you have areas in your personal life where you judge people or judge yourself, I promise you shifting that will only enhance your empathic abilities. I was talking, I was in a message circle and the gentleman who was offering a message was probably born in the 1930s. And I, for this story's sake, let's say he was from the South of America, the US. So when he came to me with a message, he assured me that it was from Martin Luther King. And I have to admit to you, I was more than skeptical. And all I could think was, sure, that's what he thinks of, because that's where he's coming from. Great. I admit that perhaps I shortchanged him and that indeed the message was from Martin Luther King. But I also thought and mention now that if you come from a particular setting and conditioning and training, it may give you a certain view of things that makes that limits your view, your psychic ability to only being. Do you see what I'm saying? When you're when you're looking at a black person, you're going to think Martin Luther King. So, so your mediumship can be affected by your personal development. I mean, honestly, I've got stories, but and and I realized years later that my personal development in seeing him as someone born in the 30s from the south of the U.S. also affected how I was able to receive his message. So. Your personal development matters, and it is relevant to your psi, and your psi is relevant to everyone and everything, because we are part of a unity. We are part of a oneness. And not only do you deserve joy and love and laughter in your life and abundance and a neat house and your projects done and your desk clear and a sense of ridiculously deep satisfaction with your life and well-being because you look around you and you find new resources and you take them on and you take on your life. Not only is it true, but that affects everyone. It is in our ancient texts. It is so, so true that we have already been whispering it to ourselves over millennia. From the 1400s, there is this saying from Rumi, and I admit this, I love this. Not only are we part of a oneness, a universal oneness, I say that the universal oneness and the energy of the universe is love. You may have heard me say this before. That's the big, huge secret that we are all energy beings and that energy is love. And Rumi in the 1400s or 1300s, he said, you are the soul of the soul of the universe, and your name is love. I remind you of this because indeed you are one with everything. I have a vested interest in your joyful well-being. I celebrate you, and I wish you to have all the things that you deserve. 
to remember to be sacredly stubborn, to remember that you are loved and you are loved, to remember you've done the best you could with what you knew so far. You are doing the best you can with what you know right now. And I hope that you will remember that if you knew better, you'd do better. And what you've done so far has gotten you here. And now it's brilliantly gotten you to a point where you can do what comes next. So by all means, give yourself credit. Get ready for what you need or will do next. Step out and step back in. Start anywhere moving forward. Because indeed, you are the soul of the soul of the universe. And your name is love. And I love that for you. <laughs> so start anywhere. Yes, I am looking at every single one of your faces and taking you in and loving all of it. Thank you for being. Thank you for being what you're up to, what you're up to in this life. Thank you for daring and thank you for being here today. Bless you.